So we're going to look in more detail. That repeating structure is called a sarcomere. So remember that mere means from biochem means unit. So the sarcomere is the flesh unit. The sarcomere is the contractile unit of skeletal muscle. And sarcomeres are defined by the distance between what's referred to as a Z line or a Z disc from one Z disc to the next. The middle of the sarcomere is referred to as the M line. So you have the thin filaments are anchored at the Z line and the thick filaments are anchored at the M line. And it's this repeated uh, structure of sarcomeres that gives us the striations that we can see. If you look at the end here, you can also see this repeating pattern of thick and thin filaments is present throughout the entire myofibril. So if we zoom down even further, we have the Z lines, so the Z discs, which are named for, I guess, an obvious reason. Um, and the M line, think middle. Um, you can also start to see that each of the filaments, the myofilaments, the thick and thin, are made of smaller structures. And that's what we're going to look at next. We'll start with the thin filament, um, and then we'll move to the thick filament. And part of the reason for giving you all of this detail is that you really need it to understand the mechanism by which muscles shorten. And without shortening, you don't get movement. So the thin filament is made of three different proteins, the most numerous width of which is a globular protein called actin. So we have all of, all of the sort of bead-like, green bead-like proteins are actin uh, molecules. Each of these round structures is in fact a protein in and of itself made of amino acid monomers. So you have two strands of actin molecules, and we'll talk about that dark dot in just a second. And then you have a thread like, two thread like molecules that are sort of a light brown color called tropomyosin. Tropo, that prefix means change. It's almost like um, a strand of beads that's been twisted, but the thread that the beads are, are sort of connected to, or at least seem to be connected to, is on the outside. And then finally, we have the troponin complex, which in this image is just drawn as a single, sort of a single bead that sits on top of the tropomyosin. This is going to seem really silly right now, but uh, I'm just going to write Juliet down here because one of, the, one of the best analogies I've ever heard for sort of how muscle contraction works is that it's sort of a continual story of Romeo and Juliet, at least, but with a happy ending, <laughs> not a sad ending. So the actin molecules are sort of like Juliet and the tropomyosin is like her brother. He's supposed to be guarding her from Romeo, but he has this friend who sometimes distracts him, um, and that's what allows Romeo and Juliet to, to bind. I know it's so dorky, but it works, at least if you know the story of Romeo and Juliet. Okay, so even closer up, actin. Those actin subunits have the dark area is a binding site for the, the a specific part of the myosin molecule, which makes up the thick filament. So in order for contraction to happen, part of the thick filament has to bind to the binding site on actin. 
But as you can see, it right now, it's covered up by the tropomyosin. The troponin complex, which is the bead-like structure here, and you can see in this image, it's got two little spots, is where calcium is bound. When calcium binds to troponin, it changes shape because that's what proteins tend to do when things bind to them. And in doing so, it actually drags the tropomyosin off of the actin subunits and uncovers those binding sites, which is what allows Romeo, also known as myosin, to bind. So the thick filament is made of a protein called myosin. It's a huge, complex protein. And I'll show you a picture in a second of individual myosin molecules. But the thing that's really striking is that each myosin molecule has these two club-like heads with the handles, or the if you think of it as a golf club, with the, um, what's that called? The shaft of, the two shafts of the golf club braided together. So the myosin molecules are bound internally to one another and then also they're bound into the middle of the sarcomere. So the M line is the middle of the sarcomere. It's also where the myosin is bound. So if we look close up at a single myosin molecule, we've got the tail um, or the, the shaft of the golf clubs, if you think about it that way. It's braided together. Um, you have two myosin heads that each have a binding site for actin. And there is, uh, there are two flexible hinge regions. There's one here, there's one here, and there's another one here. There's also a binding site for ATP. So myosin, in addition to everything else it does, is referred to as an ATP hydrolysis enzyme because it hydrolyzes uh, ATP. All right, so if we go back out a little bit into the sarcomere, right, you've got in this image, we've got three sort of graphic images of the sarcomere, three sarcomeres. The thing that's really important to take away from this image is that the sarcomeres are attached to one another through the Z lines or the Z discs, right? The thick and thin filaments, when the muscle is relaxed, it's not contracted, they are not bound to one another. The thin filaments are bound at the Z lines and the thick filaments are bound at the M lines. And if you sort of follow where the thin filaments are, so in this sarcomere, pointing to sort of the, if you think of the Z-line as being composed of a bunch of uh, triangles, or not triangles, angles, right? The next sarcomere is bound to the other point. The sarcomeres are going to contract at the same time, and they're connected to one another. So when the sarcomere contracts, the whole muscle contracts. The thick and thin filaments themselves do not change length. It's the overlap that changes. So this is just I'm trying to reiterate that a little bit. We've got the M line. We've actually got an M line here and here and here, and then one sarcomere in the middle, the beginning of a sarcomere here and here. And when you look at, with a really good microscope, what you can see is the panel, the panel like at the bottom. I don't, in this class, you guys don't need to know sort of the A band and the I band and
Okay, so single muscle fiber, right? Um, and I can tell that because I've got mitochondria. I've got the sarcolemma um, sarcoplasm. I've got multiple myofibrils. I pull out a single myofibril and look at it. I've got, let's see, I'm just going to, the H zone, just focus on the, the M line in the middle of it, um, and the Z, Z discs. So the thick filaments are anchored. The M line, the thin filaments are anchored on the Z discs. Each myofibril, although it's not, visible in the upper image, each one is surrounded by sarcoplasmic reticulum, which is where the calcium is stored when the muscle is at rest. So just like endoplasmic reticulum, it's, it's essentially a folded nodes that are all connected together. Um, okay, next. All right. So if we look at a single sarcomere, we've got the Z line, the M line, thick filament with the head, the actin binding sites, ATP binding sites, or binding site <clears throat> at the base of the heads, the hinge region, and the tail. If we look at thin filament, we see the two strands of globular actin, the two tropomyosin, fibers, protein fibers that run lengthwise, and then the, the troponin molecule, which is what's going to bind calcium. If you, we zoom way out, right, we've got the whole muscle surrounded by epimyceum. The fascicles within the muscle, which are made of muscle fibers, are surrounded by paramyceum, and each muscle fiber is surrounded by a sarcolemma, it's full of sarcoplasm and myofibrils, and it also is surrounded by endomyceum. If we take a deep dive into the muscle fiber itself, we see myofibrils, which are made of myofilaments. The thick filament is myosin, the thin filament is made up of two chains of globular actins overlain by a linear fibrous tropomyosin. And then specified intervals, you have the troponin proteins. The sarcomere is the repeating unit of thick and thin filaments. That's the basis of muscle contraction. The sarcoplasmic reticulum is modified endoplasmic reticulum, and it stores calcium. The sarcolemma is the name for the plasma membrane, and it is um, surrounded by endomyceum. And then the sarcoplasm is the name we give to the cytoplasm.